So Lynch syndrome um, is the most common inherited form of both colorectal and endometrial cancers. It accounts for about 4% of all colorectal cancer cases diagnosed each year and about 3% of all endometrial cancer patients diagnosed each year. Um, and it, it is an inherited cancer susceptibility syndrome that causes high risk, not only for colon and endometrial cancer, but also for gastric cancer, ovarian cancer, um, uh, pancreatic, hepatobiliary, uh, urinary tract cancers, um, some glioblastomas of the brain, and some unusual skin cancers of the sweat glands. Um, it is probably the second most common inherited cancer syndrome in the world, um, and it's completely underdiagnosed. We estimate that uh, uh, about 95% of people who have Lynch syndrome are not aware of their diagnosis. And the reason that's a problem is that it's um, these are cancers that are fairly preventable. If we um, know somebody has Lynch syndrome, we start their colonoscopies every one to two years, either in their 20s or their 30s, depending on the gene responsible. Two of the genes are higher risk, so we start those um, individuals in their 20s. Two are lower risk, so we start those individuals in their 30s. Uh, but suffice to say, they're going to start their colonoscopies much earlier than the general population who starts at 45, and they're going to have them a lot more frequently every one to two years instead of every 10. But by doing that, we feel like we can remove those colon cancers when they're a polyp before they become a cancer and hopefully keep them from getting a colorectal cancer in the first place. So we have a really good um, screening test. Similarly, for the endometrial cancer risk, a lot of women with Lynch syndrome will elect to have a risk-reducing hysterectomy after they're done having children and when they're close to natural menopause. Um, and that can eliminate the risk for endometrial cancer and also potentially the ovarian cancer risk. And so these, uh, this is a syndrome where if you know you have it, there is a lot of things you can do um, that will improve the outcomes. And so we're kind of working on every, every way we can to get as many people with Lynch syndrome identified so they can benefit from that screening. Last thing I'll mention here is it also can drive treatment. Um, so most people with Lynch syndrome, their tumors have microsatellite instability. Um, and as you know, since 2015, it's been shown that tumors that are MSI high or have microsatellite instability respond very well to immune checkpoint blockade therapy. Um, and so knowing this could actually change a patient's treatment for their current cancer. Of course, people should be screening those cancers for microsatellite instability, whether the patient has Lynch syndrome or not. Um, so there are other ways to determine if the patient will benefit from immune checkpoint blockade therapy, but um, you certainly would suspect it highly in a patient with Lynch syndrome.